Welcome to uh, another lecture of uh, digital design course with very luck, digital design with very luck. So, outline of the uh, today lecture is uh, combinational and sequential logic design, circuit design that store 1 bit RS slash stabilizing RS slash level sensitive. This thing already we have covered in the last uh, lecture, but today we will discuss about uh, what is uh, clock latch or we can call as a uh, flip flop or uh, edge sensitive uh, uh, storage and in this we will cover uh, D flip flop, JK flip flop, T flip flop and we looked at a uh, characterization table of uh, and characteristic equation of uh, JK flip flop, D flip flop, T flip flop and RS flip flops. In the last class what we discussed is uh, how to store a bit in digital system. So, basically without using clock and all the things uh, how can you basically store a bit and in this uh, what we uh, decided is actually uh, there is a RS flip flop we need to make it uh, ensure that uh, SR will not happen 1 1. Then uh, we will need to stabilize when C is equal to 0. Then we need to use a enable signal in last class we discussed this. First we need to ensure the things ensuring then uh, stabilizing the things stabilize uh, then only we change the R and S and then after ensuring and stabilizing it goes to the actual storage this is store the bit. And still this is a, a latch not a flip flop. So, flip flop and latch is a little bit different flip flop is used in clock domain and latch is used with without clock domain, but here still the latch is a ensured that it will store a bit nicely without any issues. And in most of the digital domain or digital circuits whenever you, you, you storage elements they are mostly used in clock domain. So, mostly in sequential fashions and in synchronous fashions. So, whenever you use clock then our storage need to adhere to the clock domain. Somehow clock need to be maintained or storage need to follow some protocols uh, to add up to the synchronous circuit and almost all processor or any designed uh, embedded system circuit or any digital system circuit most of the times uh, it is synchronous circuits. And whenever there is cl clock, so let us uh, see what is the de definition of clock and how the clock clock as seen in the slides clocks have uh, actually a pulse, pulse which have actually continuous 0 and 1 and this is a uh, uh, we can say clock clock period and here clock period is in this example it is uh, 20 nanoseconds and this one is a uh, 0 this is low voltage this is 1 voltage this is a uh, 0 and 1 and this continuous sequence continues and this is time axis this one is a uh, time period is 20 nanoseconds and whenever you say clock so clock period time interval between two pulses so this is actually one pulses and this is another pulses so what is the time difference between two pulses so time pulses difference between two pulses is clock period clock cycle is one such interval. So, we can say, so this is a cycle, this one is cycle, one cycle. So, this is a clock period 20 nanosecond, whatever we have seen that is one cycle. Clock frequency is a one by period or number of cycle per second, this is one by period. So, frequency is a, in this sub, some examples, suppose frequency is equal to one by 20 nanoseconds and which is actually 50 megahertz. So, clearly 1 hertz is equal to 1 by 1 pulse per second. So, we can say uh, 1 pulse per second is 1 hertz. So, for example, our electricity circuit, so in our uh, institute or this places in India, so most of the times are the, uh, the electric, electric signals particularly in electrical circuits they use 50 hertz. So, clock signals for RS slash whenever are storing a bit into RS slash. So, this thing will already ensure this thing is a ensure page, this one is a enable and this one is actual storage. Okay. So, whenever you say ensure, so if you look at the things ensure, stabilize, stabilize with enable signals and this one is actual storage. So, this is a, even if you are doing this thing. So, whenever this clock signals, clock signal in, in 0 positions at that time it is safe to change x and y. 
this x y signals need to be changed only when the clock signal is 0 and whenever clock is equal to 1 if you change any value of x and y it will get reflected into the storage. So, in the clock domain so what is essential is we should not change value of x and y when c is equal to 1 otherwise the change value will get reflected here immediately. Okay. So, what is the problem with this? So, the problem is these things. So, in this 0 time unit you can change it is safe to change, but here you cannot change that means uh, the we need to ensure somehow that if you are using simple RS slash in digital system or in signal circuit. So, the changes need to happen when clock is equal to 0 and that need to be ensured otherwise it will be very very difficult. This is the problem and another thing is uh, in clock domains let us look at a circuit. So, suppose uh, how need to ensure? So, this thing how do we know when it is safe to set? So, safe to set c is equal to 1 the most common solution is make c pulse up and down. So, this is a and when c is equal to 0 as seen earlier it is safe to change and when c is equal to 1 we must not change this value of x and y and clock signals pulsing signal used to enable latches because it ticks like a clock. Let us uh, uh, see whether it can be used in sequential circuit or not or synchronous circuit or not. Sequential circuit which storage element all use clock signals. So, in general all synch synchronous circuit they use storage elements then whether this stabilize ensured then stabilize ensured stabilize and stored this properly designed RS slash can be used in synchronous circuit or not and the answer is no. So, what are the issues? So, let us look at the means one examples. Suppose the level sensitive DLHS. So, whatever I have shown here level sensitive DLHS. So, suppose the DLHS are arranged in a linear fashion. So, just like similar to this this is arranged in a linear fashion connected using a single clock. So, all the latches arrange in a linear fashion and connected using a single clock. This clock is connected to all the latches. So, every clock we want to shift one bit to right. So, right bit right shift one bit per cycle. So, what one in cycle 1? So, whatever suppose uh, this is a uh, 0 1 1 0 that means in the next cycle we want this things need to go here this thing need to go here and this thing need to go here. So, this is the way. So, in every cycle only one bit should shift ok. So, every clock we want to shift one bit right for every latches that we want. Does this circuit with level sensitive DLH shift 1 bit per cycle and the answer is no. So, what is the problem? So, because latches are level sensitive, so DLHS still have a problem as uh, the SR latch when C is equal to 1 through how many latches this signal will travel it depend upon the when C is equal to if the clock is longer then it may travel 3 latches if clock is small then if C is equal to 1 this it is small then it can travel 2 or 1 latches. We cannot control per cycle 1. So, we need to somehow uh, manage the pulse width so that it can travel only 1 and which is really difficult. Clock A it may travel through multiple latches because this width is higher and clock B it may travel fewer latches may be 1 or 2, but we cannot guarantee. But what do we want? Our problem is we wanted to shift every clock cycle 1 bit from left latches to right latches from 
from this latches to this latches 1 bit from this to this 1 bit. So, that means uh, right shift 1 bit per cycle we want, but with RS latch this level sensitive D latch or RS latch it is not happening with level sensitive D latch it is not happening. It is hard to pick C or size of the C the size of the clock particularly this pulse width that is not just the right length. So, what are the solutions? So, solution is uh, we want to do the work one per cycle only one bit should shift independent of length of clock independent of whether for this or whether for this for clock here also one and here also one independent of this clock width we want that independent of length of clock we should shift one per clock cycles and is there any solutions? The solution says uh, if you look at independent of length of clock then we need to look at something different instead of uh, the width or value c is equal to 1. So, let us look at when the either it is going up or when it is going down. So, either one the solution is can we design a bit storage that only store value on the rising edge of the signals because there is exactly one rising edge per clock cycle you can say this is a one clock cycle and in this there is one rising edge and one falling edge independent of width of the pulse. So, there is exactly one falling edge per clock cycle there is exactly one rising edge per clock cycle. So, in this way we can design a bit storage which can store at either rising edge or falling edge then our problem will be solved because we do not want to shift multiple bit at a time one per cycle per clock cycle and the solution is uh, this. So, we can see there is exactly one rising edge per clock cycle exactly one rising edge per clock cycle and latch is by default it is level sensitive and we want to make a flip flop. So, that is actually edge sensitive storage value get changed only at edge of the clock instead of level sensitive let us make it edge sensitive and how we can make. So, that should be some way to make level sensitive and how to make flip flop out of edge. So, how to make flip flop out of latch. So, this latch is a 1 bit storage with level sensitive, but we want to make edge sensitive. So, how to do? So, we can make like this. So, we can use uh, 2 latches output of first goes to the input of second and first one is a uh, master latch. So, master latch has uh, inverted clock signals. So, and when the master get loaded c is equal to 0 the then servant when c is equal to 1. So, let us make 2 latches okay. and let us see how it works. When c changes from 0 to 1 master disable servant loaded with value that was at d just before c changed and the value of d during the rising edge of c this ensure that value of d at just rising edge of c. So, how it happens the d flip flop master slave uh, d flip flop or there will be 2 latches. So, there is this is latch 1 and this is latch 2 okay. and this one is master latch and this one is servant latch. So, master latch is uh, this clock clock is inverted clock is given to the master one and the direct clock is given to the servant one and this case the it store the data okay on clock edge not at level. So, at 0 so when clock is equal to 1 whenever clock is equal to suppose this CLK is equal to 1 then clearly this will be 0 whenever this will be 0 that means this will not be enabled. So, this will not be enabled 
So, this is a c is equal to because c m is equal to 0 h c m is equal to 0. So, in this case, so whatever this will we can safely change because at in uh, st stabilizing that means, one clock is equal to 0 we, it can stabilize it is safe to change. So, when c is equal to 0 then servant when c is equal to 1. So, when c changes from 0 to 1 so master get disabled. So, when c is equal to 0 that means, it is safe to change and whatever you can do here it get stored here, but when it get transferred to the second one once this guy will be master will be disabled and servant loaded to the value that was at d just before c have changed and the value of d during the rising edge of c. So, this will happen just like uh, so this is the clock this one the clock and this is the d m suppose uh, this is you change d m and this is the c c m we have changed. So, whenever you have changed this thing c m change from this place to this place ok. Then this d m and q s this d m and you will get q m because c is equal to initially c is equal to this is c is equal to clock is equal to 0 this clock is equal to 0 that means, if the clock is equal to 0 this value this is if clock is equal to any suppose initially clock is equal to 0 this value get this value get 1. So, whenever this value get 1 then this thing pass to q m is equal to d. So, value of q get passed here, but whenever c s is equal to 0 this will not pass through this this will not pass through this whenever value of clock is equal to 0 it will not pass through this whenever value of clock is equal to 1 this will be disabled. So, whenever C L k is equal to 1 this will be disabled this will be disabled and this will be enabled. So, in this case the enabled value so whenever C s is equal to 1 so whenever C s is equal to 1 that means clock value get 1 then only whatever the value this thing get transferred to this place. So, that means at the rising edge only the value get transferred. So, this uh, ensure that uh, bit shifting happens 1 bit per clock cycle. So, this is the example of rising edge and falling edge. So, this is the symbol for rising edge Trizer D flip flop. So, this is a uh, symbolically you can uh, put like this this is the rising edge because this thing is rising edge and this is a D flip flop. So, D flip flop edge clock flip clocked one it is not ledge and it have two output one is q and other is q bar and q bar is always uh, inverted to q and this one is a uh, rising edges rising edges rising edges and similarly you can design what you can say falling edges also. So, if you just invert the clock then it will be actually falling edges. So, this symbols this dot symbol ensure this is a falling edge and similarly in this falling edge the this need to be just get opposite. So, this is the rising edge uh, deep flip flop and the falling edge. So, this uh, clock need to be just reverse. So, instead of putting uh, this thing this will be just like here and it will be directly connected. And with the deep flip flop, whatever the problem we faced, that is solved. So, we solve problem of not knowing how many latches a signal travel when c is equal to 1. Now, it is travel only 1 because every rising edge only it travels. And now, this earlier things now every this is all our flip flop not latches and inside a flip flop there are two latches inside a flip flop that will be master that will be slave that will be master that will be slave master slaves master slave. So, every flip flop have two latches. Signal travel through exactly one flip flop and for clock A and clock B 
it do not depend upon the width of the pulse. So, because on rising edge of clock all four flip flower are loaded simultaneously then all four no longer pay attention to their input until the next rising edge. It does not matter how long the clock is. So, how long for this also it will work and for this pulse also it will work. For both the clock it will work perfectly. So, that is the deep flip flop and clearly from this earlier context what we say is uh, what is the difference between D latches and D flip flop? D latch means latch is level sensitive. It store bit D or input D 1 C is equal to 1 and what is the flip flop? Flip flop is by default it is edge treasure. It can be positive edge or negative edge and store D store the input value D when C changes from either 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So, if it is positive edge treasure then it store at when changes from clock changes from 0 to 1. If it is negative edge treasure flip flop then it store the data when clock changes from 1 to 0. And clearly we can see so the positive edge treasure deep flip flop we can optimize little bit and this is the basic one. So, this is the master flip flop and this is the slave flip flop. This one having if you look at this circuit. So, in this circuit we have a total 10 number of gate and out of this 4 are NOR gate, 4 are AND gate and 2 are NOT gate. So, this is actually this one is a for stabilizing, this is stabilizing and this is store 2 NOR gate for storage for both the things it is 4 and this is the this ensure that uh, R and S will not happen 1 1 and this is the clock. This is the positive edge driver D clock D flip flop ok. So, this require 10 gates 4 NOR gate 4 AND gate and 2 NOT gate and let us look at a uh, very low code for master shape flip flop. Suppose uh, this is what I am showing is uh, this is a uh, uh, very low code for D flip flop D let not D flip flop this is D latches and this have a uh, 2 input enable and D and 1 output Q and for every time not every clock for every time. So, it is uh, if enable is 1 then it transfer D to Q. So, that is a basically D latches. So, if enable is equal to 1 it simply transfer the input to the storage. So, D is equal to Q if enable is 1. So, this is the D latches code for the D latches. This is the code for the D latches and we combine two D latches to make it a flip flop D flip flop. This is the master latches this is a slave latches and this we are putting clock the whatever the similar to web design earlier ok. So, this is the one is giving master is giving negative clock and this is positive clock this is inverted clock and this is a non inverted clock and whatever the output of the master this is a, you can say output of the master we are giving to the input. So, this is the D is input this is the input this is the output and this output is served as input to this. So, this is a two master shape element and this is a q bar equal to always uh, we are making inverted of q and we are declaring in this case a uh, clock d q q bar and there is a where w 1 which is uh, this w 1 and this is the source code for a uh, very low code for uh, D flip flop with two master shape latches, and this is the very low code for driver program. So driver program is test bench program. So this is the D flip flop test where we are declaring two register D and I clock, and uh, another two where Q and Q V, and we are instantiating here. You are instantiating. This is instantiations. We are instantiation of a uh, D flip flop uh, here. And it have a 
4 input, so similar to the earlier models, clock D and 2 output. And let us see what are the component of this uh, test benches. So, in this case we are two processes are there. So, one part is uh, we are continuously increasing the clock and giving input to the this thing. Anyhow, we are changing continuously every uh, 10 second in this case and we are displaying the value of clock D, Q and Q bar. And in this uh, what we are saying we are dumping the file means what are the changes into a BCD file so that we can see on the GTK web and this is the dump variables, dump variable all the variables let dump. So, we can specify what variable you want, but let dump all the variable later on you can select on the GTK web and this is the at what time initially D is equal to 0 then uh, after 25 seconds making D is equal to 1 and after that we are uh, making D is equal to 0 at after 30 seconds from here and then at another 30 25 seconds we are making D is equal to 1. So, 0 1 0 1 we are making and whenever how to compile the code and how to do this thing let us see. So, we can compile this code using the simple command. So, I very luck already we have discussed in the earlier classes. So, this is the I very luck D underscore MS underscore FF whatever the code and then we run the code and after running the code. So, it will generate a BCD dumps and some debug output. So, of the particularly this uh, display code and if you compile and run the things and it will generate a d flip flop uh, structural d flip flop dot bcd and if you can see these things so this is gtk web so clearly it uh, says uh, d value changed at this points at this point we are changing the d values so at 25 then at 55 and at 80 you are changing but the most importantly so the, the d value get re reflected on output at what time it gets stored into the flip flop okay at what time it gets stored into flip flop at exactly if you look at this is the rising edge at this point this we have said at this point but it got reflected at this point at the rising edge so we have changed value at here but got reflected when here not reflected here not reflected only here it got reflected here at the next rising edge it got reflected and then so here we have changed if you look at in this case here near to the clock change we have done but it is not getting reflected because we require a rising edge so it got reflected at this point so clearly what you see is a q value reflected at positive clock edges and what we want so positive edge treasure flip flop this behave similarly we have designed also we have written code written code compiled run and we have seen the web form the it is behaving exactly what we want and let us design let us optimize bit and how can design uh, the flip flop in a better way. So, remember uh, in last classes we have discussed uh, we can design SR ledgers in NAND gate and this is the table means a uh, characterization table of uh, SR ledge with NAND gate and it is just a uh, opposite of SR ledge with NOR gate a set will do when q is equal to 0 and this set will do when q is equal to 1 that we have already discussed. So, we can design a economical d flip flop using only 6 NAN gate and in this case all are similar gate. So, whenever all are similar it is easy to design also easy to fabricate ok. So, whenever same things ok just like bricks now the flip flop bricks are actually NAN gate not the multiple in earlier case if you look at earlier cases then it is actually huge. So, there are 4 NOR gate, 4 AND gate and 2 NOT gate, but in this case all the gates are similar gates. So, this is the NAND gate latches characteristic table and let us look at uh, how it is actually functions and it works one clock is equal to 0, one clock is equal to 0 it makes S dash and R dash 1 1 and whenever this make it 1 1 
then what will happens? So, clearly you can see, so whatever the earlier states are there, the same thing written is independent of D, is not dependent on D, is independent of D, it written the states. And whenever clock is equal to 1, whenever clock is equal to 1 and D is equal to 0, suppose D is equal to 0, clock is equal to 1, then D is equal to 0, it is make this thing 1. Okay. So, clock is equal to 1 and D is equal to 0. So, if you look at this thing is 1 0. So, what will make? So, it will make 1 0 make this thing 0 and this is uh, 1 and 1. Whenever it sets 1 and 1, this 1 and 1, it makes whatever the earlier things are there that will continue. So, 1 is earlier there and it is continue. That means now 1 0, 1 0 and 1 0 whenever you make 1 0. So, 1 0 make the things q plus 0. So, whenever clock is equal to 1, d is equal to 0, it will make this thing and this thing what we are saying is as does continue because this is 1 1, this one is 1 1, this part is this thing because this this thing 1 1, so this this thing and this thing is 1 1. So, as does will continue as 1, no changes, but it will set the value q plus to be 0 and this is for this and this is for this one because this is 1 1 states and this one it goes to 1 0. So, same things because of 1 0 here also 1 0 is set to 1 and this is actually q value for this one for this value 1 this is the q value q, q intermediate 1 this is 0 and for this 1 0 it is setting 0 and after that one clock is equal to 1. So, d is equal to 1 no changes for R dash R dash clock is equal to 1. So, clearly 1 1. So, this is 1 1. So, whenever it make it 1 1. So, earlier bit still retains okay. and this 1 1 earlier bit will retains. Whenever earlier value retains the old value still retains because all the places it is going 1 1. Whenever it goes 1 1 Q 0 is locked that means it will not change and this is the case. And whenever after that one we make clock is equal to 0, d is equal to 1, then q plus is equal to 1 independent of this thing. Okay, whenever 1 1, so whenever clock is equal to 0, d is equal to 1, clock is equal to 0, d is equal to 1, 0 1. So, in this case 0 1 it will make it this thing 1. Okay, and this 0 0, so because this thing is uh, already there. So, 1 1 it will make q plus 0 and after that 1 clock is equal to 1 and d is equal to 1 clock plus it will be next clock plus means uh, what will be the output in the next clock. So, it will be 1. So, this is uh, 1 1. So, clock is equal to 1 d is equal to 1. So, this will make uh, whatever the earlier state continues and it will make this one 0 this one 0, whenever it make one 0 1, 0 1. So, it will make this 0 1 and this 0 1. So, it will make q plus 1. So, which is basically uh, a positive edge treasure behavior of positive edge driver clock, positive edge treasure flip flop. So, this is a uh, this flip flop is a uh, this design of this flip flop is economical because it use similar kind of a uh, gate and of less number 6 nand gate and all nand gate are similar type all nand gate of similar type and this is the why you can say it is economical 6 nand gate number gate count also less earlier it was 10 now it is 6 and it is of same type same type means fabrications will be much easier and i am showing two Another design, but uh, transistor level optimizations, it is out of syllabus, but showing for this for the Sega of showing. Okay. So, for master slave flip flop, we can design with uh, 16 transistor. Okay. So, this is transistor level, and if you do with uh, CMOS, then you can do with uh, 8 transistor. This is out of syllabus, but I am showing. But ultimately, what we have done? So, to store a bit, okay. So, we tried with uh, basically OR gate, then cross coupled uh, OR gate. Then we tried with NOR gate, two NOR gate, and which successfully we store the bit, but uh, there is race conditions. Then to ensure the 
R s is equal to 1 on not happen and adding a not gate and end gate we did it then after that we enabled first thing is ensure and then stable. So, we make it stable by putting enable signals and then here till this point it is actually still latch it store the bit without clock then we make a master slip flip flop from the latches then optimize with uh, instead of 10 gates we optimize the 6 gates 6 non gate and then one can go with actually 8 CMOS transistors. So, this is way how we can design a very simplistic way of designing a flip flop this is the optimized design. So, we are not going detail up to this, but we have gone up to up to this level up to this level because this is uh, transistor and CMOS level we are not covering. So, we are skipping that thing, but still we have shown it and convention is the circuit is set means output is equal to 1 and the circuit is reset means output is equal to 0. This is a standard convention of flip flops and flip flop have two output q and q bar or q naught and q is a means a regular output and q naught is actually inverted output and due to time related characteristics the flip flop q t or q represents the present state and q t plus 1 or q plus represent the next state this is the standard concept many books use uh, sometimes uh, uh, q t and q t plus 1 some books use q and q plus ok. So, this is the clock this is the 1 clock 0th clock 1 clock this is the second clock this is the third clock at what clock what will it? suppose it is a q and this will be q plus or q t plus 1. So, this is suppose if it is q 0 then it is q 1 this is the convention and there are four type of flip flops SR flip flop, D flip flop, JK flip flop, JK flip flop is uh, unavoidable of SR 1 1 state can be used for toggle the output and all inputs values are useful in this case and we will discuss about JK flip flop. JK flip flop was invented uh, by someone ok and it honored JK flip flop was named to honor Jack and Kilby of Texas Instrument engineer who invented the concept of ICs ok. So, to honor Jack and Kilby this uh, flip flop named JK and T flip flop is double flip flop. So, JK flip flop augment the behavior of SR is equal to 1 1. So, particularly J is equal to set and K is equal to reset by interpreting S is equal to r is equal to 1 s is equal to 1 and j r is equal to 1 that means it make j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1 ok. And this is uh, how we can make a uh, j k flip flop from s r. So, this is actually what we are doing is uh, whatever the output q bar output we are giving to j and this is a uh, q 2 q output we are ending with uh, k and this is a uh, exactly not flip flop this is actually latch this is not flip flop. So, th this is j k latch from s r latch. So, how we can use means uh, s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 conditions because earlier in s r latch s we are using 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 was not used. So, only 3 inputs or three variety of inputs of two input are getting used only last condition was not used. How can you use? If you can use then it will be beneficial. So, from the j k latch we can get actually j k flip flop and j k flip flop is similar to the master slip uh, d flip flop and here only thing is this q bar is uh, getting into ended into j and here q is ended into so, if you look at q plus is equal to k bar q, k bar q. So, this is a plus j q bar, j q bar. This is a k bar q and j q bar. So, this is the way we design. So, in this uh, diagram it is uh, not uh, uh, immediately it is coming. So, what is k bar q and j q bar. So, he, here this thing is uh, j and 
q it is a uh, this thing but whenever we say because this is a uh, clock is a uh, opposite so it will be activated on the means uh, when uh, clock is equal to suppose if, if, if this is the clock if this clock is equal to 1 then 1 will be j will be in this case uh, if clock is equal to 1 then this part will be activated otherwise other part will be activated. So, if you look at the JK flip flop to synthesize a D flip flop simply we require k equal to complement of j and JK flip flop is a universal flip flop because it can be configured to work as any flip flop T flip flop D flip flop or SR flip flop any flip flops. So, we can say this is the J flip flop one okay, JK flip flop this is the JK flip flops and this is the uh, characteristics table of JK flip flop and if it is 0 0 then it is a return the older state if it is 1 1 it is actually complements and if you take out these things then if you look at this is actually you can use as T flip flop. So, these are the T flip flop. So, this one is a 0 0 the 1 1 means this complement of thing this is T flip flop and for this this one is a we can use as a D flip flop and this one is a you can use a regular RS flip flop. So, if you take some parts so this part it will act as T flip flop double flip flop this will act as a D flip flop and this will act as RS flip flop this part is will be act as RS flip flop this part will be act as D flip flop. So, JK flip flop can be used as a universal flip flop. So, very luck code for JK flip flop let us see. So, module JK flip flop this is there are input are JK clock and output is Q and what we are doing is for every clock positive edge. So, if k is equal to j and k. So, if j k is equal to 0 0 j is equal to 0 k is equal to 0. So, we are retaining the older value if j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 1 we are res resetting this is 0 1 for reset actually same table you are trying to fit the same table you are trying to fit the same table you are trying 0 0 earlier value 0 1 this is a reset 1 0 set and 1 1 this thing actually some characteristic table are putting into this thing based on the characteristic we are setting the values this is the code for this thing and in very low we can write code very nicely because it is similar to C we can use a uh, uh, case statements and assignment statements very nicely and these are uh, similar to the earlier code. So, who are instantiating the JK flip flop who are uh, declaring two three register value J k and I C L k and where q this is register value we can assign values from the uh, modules. So, this is part a. So, who are uh, this clock is changed and uh, we are monitoring uh, j k and q j k and q clock j k and q and here in another module we are uh, dumping variables to j k f f dot b c d s then uh, dump all variables this is dump file where b c d file will be created and we are changing values j is equal to initially j is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 then after 5 second we are changing value to 0 1 after 20 after that after 20 seconds we are changing to 1 0 again after 20 we are changing to 1 1 and after 20 we are finishing the things finishing the simulations and if we compile and run the code this is the compilations one and compilation of jk flip flop this uh, and this is the running the code and if you run the code if you run the code then we will get a waveform like this and clearly from the waveform we can see. So, j k value changed here or you can see j and k value changed here j and k value changed here this is the j and k value changed here this is the value changed of j and k. But what we are getting is actually whenever value of j and k is changed immediately the output is not getting changed output will be changed at. So, if you look at output change at this places this place earlier it was z as unknown one now it changed to q change to 0 at this point it got changed okay. 
and at this point it got changed. So, Q got changed at this point, this point that means at exactly at positive edges it changes. So, whatever we learned in the design basic flip flop designs the changes also happening at the positive clock edges and it behaving exactly what we want also in source code also in the Verilog code also. And toggle flip flop is T flip flop it can be designed from a means uh, JK flip flop if uh, JK flip flop all the inputs J and K is equal to 1 then we can get a T flip flop and which can be represented like this ok. So, similar to so directly instead of doing this thing you can combine to a single line ok. So, this is T flip flop and this is the Verilog code for T flip flop. So, what we are doing? So, this is one input T and another input is clock and output is Q and for every clock cycle. So, we are doing Q is equal to T if T is equal to 1 then it is inverting the Q and if T is equal to 0 you are setting the older value is inverting if T is equal to 1 this it is uh, inverting if T is equal to 1 this is inverting and if it is T is equal to it is older value this take older value. So, this is the uh, very basic uh, Verilog code for T flip flop and there are this four flip flop types. So, if you take this uh, SR flip flop, SR flip flop can convert into D flip flop similarly JK flip flop also can be converted into T flip flop ok. So, and this is a given a D flip flop how to construct a JPEG flip flop given a D flip flop how can we construct a JK flip flop. D flip flop is given and from this we want to construct a JK flip flop. So, how the behavior of JK flip flops ok. So, what should be the value of D so that the whole things will be given this thing this thing is given. So, we want to put some extra circuitry this extra circuitry some extra circuitry so that it will behave like a JK flip flop. So, we know two table of JK flip flop we know what is the two table of JK flip flop we want to create value of this thing D values because D value is simple data storage. So, from the JK and Q we want to create this thing ok. So, JK is equal to 0 is need to be older value 1 0 1 reset 1 0 set and 1 1 Q bar. So, we can write this thing in this format and if you simply optimize little bit of modifications then we can get D is equal to K bar Q plus J Q bar. D is equal to K bar Q plus J Q bar and you can see so this one is a J this is Q bar this one is a J Q bar and this is a K bar Q this one is K bar Q this one is and we are adding there simply we can convert a D flip flop into JK flip flop. So, similarly you can construct a T flip flop out of D flip flop. So, because D flip flop is a, a again a basic one and from the basic storage you can convert a, to any flip flop. So, we need to look at the characteristics table. So, from the characteristics what what is the behavior? So, 0 Q 0 Q dex this is a not 0 this is 1 Q dex 1 Q dex. So, because this is 0 Q and 1 Q dex then uh, it will be 1 q dex 0 q and 1 q and this is a uh, 0 q dex and this thing. So, that means uh, it will be t q dex and t dex q. So, if you can generate a circuits this is a t 1 this is a t 1 then we can create a, a construct a t flip flop given a d flip flop and this uh, uh, finishes uh, basic of uh, uh, latches and flip flop. So, in this uh, we have uh, covered uh, uh, how to design a very good storage, how to design a master safe flip flop and what are the characteristic equation of uh, JK flip flop, D flip flop, T flip flop and JK flip flop is universal flip flop how can you convert uh, JK flip flop to any other flip flop. Also uh, given a D flip flop basic data storage flip flop. So, we can design JK flip flop, T flip flop and uh, RS flip flop. Look at the characteristic equations and just uh, set the 
means uh, what the extra circuitry we require similar to x this is the extra circuitry the extra circuitry required for this thing you just derive from the characteristic equations okay this finishes okay thank you mm -hmm.